putting that ego aside, you know, which is huge because, oh, I'm so successful. I don't have to do that anymore. Or, you know, that's that's beneath me now. Or, I, you know, that's- well, here, here's here's a story on that. I remember when I started uh, a little organization called Basso on Business and we produce little web shows to help mm-hmm. small, and medium sized business owners. And every month um, we would host an event called Working Lunch with Rob, where we get 40 business owners in the room, have lunch and work on business issues. Right. Well, when I first started this, I would get up in front of the room and basically have talk at people and tell them what I thought they wanted to hear. Well, I'm Rob Basso. Of course you want to hear what I have to say. And the crowd looked like zombies and I totally lost them. And here's the stupid thing. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. I was playing a part that I thought people wanted to to hear and see from me. And as soon as I started just being myself, doing what was prescribed, do exactly right, right. And and as soon as I started being myself and not doing what was prescribed, it flourished beyond my comprehension. And part of the reason that even got a major publisher to pay attention to my book deal was because of the good work we did through Basso on business. So, but that was being yourself. That was really, you know, not listening to what the convention is and getting out there and being true to who you are. I think most successful entrepreneurs are true to who they are. And they're easy. Yes. Hey, I have an ego, Tim. I know you got an ego, <laughs> but the reality is the only way you'll be successful long term is if you keep that in check. And I, I never forget where I came from. You know, you talked about um, running with winners, and as you said that, there was a – I, I can't reference, you know, the, the, the source of – it was a study done. Take your five closest friends. You probably heard this one. Take your five closest friends. Average out that income, and you're going to fall right into that average. That's pretty funny. I, I've never played that game. Hmm. I'm going to go home and play that game tonight. <laughs> now, but everybody do I have listening. to ask them for their in- income? Uh, but, oh, I do their payrolls, technically. I know, but, <laughs> oh, sh- I'm not supposed to share that no, information. Sure, I won't no, do it on we, air we anyway. No, absolutely not. Uh, but it's it's funny how that plays out. And, and, and for the people listening out there, you know, you, could, you we have a pretty good idea of where your friends are at. And you know what? <clears throat> You got to elevate yourself. I guess that doesn't so surprise much, me. That's interesting. It, I read that. I never. I got to remember the source. So I got to get back to. Does that, that mean if your if your friends are in a low lower income bracket, you shouldn't be friends with them? Is that what you're saying, Tim? Well, if you want to put me on the spot, which is cool, uh, I think what you have to yeah you have different sets of friends, but it's like where do you want to go in life? And you know what? Hey, if if you move on and make additional friends, you see how he flipped it. Now he's interviewing me. Uh, that was good, wasn't it? Was good. Well, here I'll take you off the hook. I, I, here's oh, okay. here, here, here's a quick story. I got a friend who was a hedge fund manager, and he probably made fifty million dollars. Just right. pick the number; it doesn't matter. Some stupid number, and um, he's not my friend anymore. He basically cut off everybody in his life, and I think a bunch of his friends were really you know upset with that for a while. But you know, based on this conversation, I understand why. He did what we did. He did, and you would hope that the world is a better place that we can all just get along. But the reality right. is, he had different things that he wanted to do with his life, and different people he wanted to travel with, and that's fine. It depends on you as an individual. That's my opinion. Right. And I've got friends that are cops. I've got friends that are firemen. I've got friends that put my income to shame. And you know, for for me, it's a balance, and and I think that's what's important in life. But you know, Tim, I get your point. I do understand it. What what has been a challenge that you've dealt with and that you continue to deal with since you started Advantage? I think one of the biggest challenges is attracting good talent. Mm. And no matter what industry you're in, right. um, I think it's universal. And you would figure with the unemployment rate as high as it is, in fact, in the local region, there's been an uptick. Yeah, you could say it's because people have stopped looking. That's besides the point. The reality is there are plenty of unemployed people, and you could also say, well, those people are not the good ones anyway. That's not entirely true. Um, For some reason, especially in the last 18 months, I found it even more difficult to find talent when you assume there'd be more available people. So we've gone full bore in every possible way. We never stop interviewing. Even if we're not looking for somebody, right. we're constantly interviewing. It is a big part of my – this was just a structural change in the last probably six, seven months. It's changed the way that we hire. We put all processes in place so we're never behind the eight ball and we'll always have two or three people. Mm-hmm. And we still struggle. Right. And I think most entrepreneurs that I talk to – in fact, we did a survey not too long ago of uh, my Advantage Payroll Service clients. And that was one of the number one items. They had trouble finding the talent to right. run their operations. Right. I hear that a lot. 
Well, and it, you could, again, you could blame it on Long Island and say, oh, people are exiting, you know, Long Island. In fact, X amount of hundreds of thousands left to move down to Florida from New York State. That's partly true, but I also it's think that's just an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, hiring is a big issue. And uh, I think that anybody that's listening out there was nodding their head while they're driving in their car on their way home, stuck in traffic, saying, yeah, it stinks, especially if you're the owner or entrepreneur. And folks, you're listening to the Profit Express right here on 88.7 FM WRHU. And today's guest is Rob Basso, the author of the brand new book, The Everyday Entrepreneur. Rob, we have just a, a few more moments left. Now, again, my pain, great read. It was, as I said throughout the interview today, it was a relatable read to entrepreneurs everywhere out there who are listening. Now, out of all the interviews you've done for the book, was there a theme that you were able to identify as the, the biggest challenge that's facing businesses today? Well, one of the things that I uh, that I noticed, uh, not only doing the interviews that might not necessarily be directly correlated with some of the tenets in the book, but access to capital keeps coming up again and again and again. And I've been interviewed a number of times on some of the national uh, news networks mm-hmm. uh, because of my client base and the information that they provide me and being a part owner in a uh, nationally chartered community bank also gives me some insight it is still a struggle for small and medium-sized business owners, no matter how good their credit is, no matter how capitalized they are. Um, in fact, I know recently uh, one of the plans that rolled out probably about almost two years ago, there was supposed to be $30 billion that was rolled out to small banks and, and large banks to be able to be loaned out. And the fact of the matter is less than like 3 or $4 billion of that has actually been loaned out. And I think it's a story that's completely untold and completely unreported, and it's a darn shame because we can't run this country and get moving forward unless capital gets in small and medium-sized business owners' hands. There have been at least five or six interviews that I've had where – Sometimes they, they – even though I'm, I'm on for small business, they keep trying to drag me away from small business during the conversation. Right. And I find that shocking because everybody knows it's the heartbeat of America. It's what fuels the entire economy. Every pundit knows that, but they don't want to talk about it for some reason. And it always drives me nuts that we are so important to this entire world economy, but – People put on the snooze bar when they talk about small business. I'm sorry that the deli down the block is not that exciting or the, the, the street cleaning service that cleans your driveway. You know, this is what makes America one. And until right. we wake up and realize that right. and realize that we need to be able to fund these ventures, we're going to be in this economic downturn. And I firmly believe that. Well, you know, a, a lot of those news programs, you know, you're right. It's not sexy. It's not Apple. So eh, let's move away from it. Um, I like to ask this question. Who inspires you? That's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that question that directly. And I have to say, and I'm pausing because I'm thinking, because there's actually quite a few people that I really look up to and and I admire. Um, I have to say, and this is not going to be a political answer because I'm actually not on this side of the political fence, but I'm going to say Bill Clinton. And the reason I'm going to say Bill Clinton is because he did what I believe did a tremendous job keeping us, uh, our economy headed in the right direction. He basically got rid of welfare. Now it's back stronger than ever, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, And he is a survivor. He is a true story of someone who rose to the pinnacle of success, came crashing down, and then came striding right back up again with his successful books and tours and everything that he does to try to help the world. And to me, that really shows the character of a man or a woman where you can really pick yourself up from a dramatic worldwide defeat and still come out on top somehow. And I find that rather amazing. And it doesn't mean I believe the things that he did were proper or any of that and that whole scandal and the nonsense that's not what i mean it's just about his you know real fortitude and his ability to compartmentalize different parts of his life to to be still be a successful individual and i i I, you know i applaud him i'd like to i'd like to actually spend time with him one day one of my friends was uh actually a hofstra university graduate was uh, his secret service agent for a while and i had a chance to say hello to bill clinton on several occasions he had a masterful way to think you're the only person in the room yes i've read that a lot of times that's actually a very good answer though very interesting very interesting uh people want to get in contact uh, i know you've got the book review coming up huntington g- g- give us those um facts and dates and such what do Great. you got next wednesday 7 p.m to 9 p.m i'm starting off right at seven o'clock i'm going to read some excerpts from the book and uh, i'm going to talk about some of the success stories of my own and some of my failures and some of the individuals in the book at the book review in huntington and uh the 
the book is available right here at the Hofstra Bookstore, as well as anywhere you buy books online, whether that's uh, you know Amazon.com or BarnesandNobles.com. But I would appreciate it if you find a local vendor, and if they're not carrying my book, um, ask them to order it. They'll get it for you. Let's support local businesses. And it's not that I don't like the big guys. It's just we're all about small business here on this show, and I think it's important that you try to patronize the local guys. I love it. I love it. Rob, thanks so much for being on board today. Thanks, Tim. I had a blast.